our students. Someone wrote me not too long ago, L.A. Plata, and asked me to show them my drawing process. So I said, okay, let me send them an old video and show them the process that I use for drawing. Because anytime somebody sees a video, they'll say, oh, can you show me how to draw hands or feet or whatever? And I tell them, I got that, I got a video. So I'll send you a link to the old video. But as I was looking through this video, for the video, I said, you know what, I don't have that. I have videos that show you the process to do one or two things. So I said, you know, that would make for a great video to show everybody the process or my process to drawing. So I'm gonna do this video on that. And while I have your attention, let me point out my shirt. No fear, no doubt, no worry. Move forward. That's how you should be doing with anything in life. This is my t-shirt. This is one of the t-shirts that I made, by the way. I'm just letting you know that this is what you should live by. Don't worry about it. Don't doubt yourself. Don't be afraid to do it. Just keep moving forward and you will reach your goal in life no matter what it is. Just do it. Well, that's Nike's slogan. That's why I couldn't use Nike's slogan. Just keep moving forward. Move forward. All right, let's get into this video. All right, let's get into the process of drawing. Now, the first thing you have to do, and I guess this is a process for anything, is don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. Now, let me give you an example. Um, I never rode a bike before. I've never ever been able to ride a bike as a young kid. So as now that I'm older, focus camera, I say to myself, let me, let me go buy a bike. I want to learn how to ride a, a bike. So I go out and buy a bike and I pull up in my driveway and I'm taking my bike out the um, trunk of my car. So my neighbor's there and he's looking at me and he's like, hey, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to learn how to ride a bike. I never rode a bike before. He said, oh, okay. So I climb on the bike and I get like three rotations of the pedals and I fall off. Then I jump up, I get mad, and I pick up the bike over my head, and I slam it on the ground, and I start kicking it and cussing at it. Like, this is stupid, this is stupid, I've never learned how to ride a bike. And my neighbor's like, oh, wait, wait a minute. You just got on the thing. What do you think you struck to be a perfectionist right away? You have to learn it. And it's like with everything in life, you have to learn it step by step. The more you do it, the better you become. Cooking, swimming, playing the piano. But I run into a lot of people that wanna do art or drawing, and they can't do it the first time. They can't make that perfect square, that circle, and then they get mad and they pick that thing up over their head and slam it down and they just call it all kind of names. Don't beat yourself up. You won't be able to do it the first time regardless of what you do. If you do, then you're a master. But for the majority of us, you won't be able to get it the first time. Take your time. That's it. Just keep moving forward. Don't be afraid of it. Just keep moving forward and you will get it eventually in time all right so let's talk about the process of drawing my process of drawing or the process of drawing mostly my process of drawing so let me straighten up my camera because my camera's crooked this is straight this is straight for me but it's crooked for the camera so let me straighten that up real quick all right so first thing the first thing when you look at something, and I'm going all the way back, all the way back, when you look at something, it's going to take on one of three shapes. It's either gonna be a circle, a triangle, or a square. It's gonna be one of those three shapes. Now, I know I continue to harp on this in just about all my videos, but if you can't draw these, then you're not gonna be able to draw an apple tree or a building or a Corvette or a, a superhero. So you have to learn these three shapes. That's just, that's just it because if you look around the room, the, the, the monitor you're looking at is probably a rectangle. The chair you're sitting on is some kind of square rectangle. The wheels on the chair are round. Um, if you have a lamp in your room, the lamp is shaped like this. You cut it off, you add uh, another, um, cylinder and maybe a triangle base or something and then you have a lamp so it's just by taking these shapes and then drawing them out chopping them up turning them around upside down to the left to the right will you be able to create something that is the first step seeing something and seeing what shape it is um i can pull out so many things on this table and you will immediately see the shape this tennis ball, this little bracelet, um, this Garfield, you know, it's, it's, it's an oval here and an oval there. The eyes are more of half of a circle cut in half. Well, if you take the whole eye, it's a circle and cut it in half. 
There's just so many different things. This pen, um, this ruler, so many different things, and you can name the shape. If you look at something for its shape and not look at it with, oh, it's got so much detail, like this, this busted up ruler. If I tell you to draw this ruler, you might start looking at each line and each hole and the cutouts here and the grooves in the wheels and say, oh, that's, that's impossible to draw, but it's just really basically two straight lines, a curve right here, cut it off right here, some half circles, some circles, and throw some lines in there. It's pretty simple, but people have that fear. Oh, I can't draw that because you're looking at the thing as a not as you're looking as a whole and not just take it piece by piece. It's like having a pizza. You can't shove that whole pizza in your mouth. You have to cut it slice by slice and eat a little bit at a time. And then when you finish, it's done. So same thing with drawing. I mean, if this lamb had like little frilly things all over here and had like designs and stuff here and other designs and little things coming out here and here and the designs in the base, I would look at that and say, wow, that'd be impossible to draw. But you just look at it as one piece at a time. What shape is that? What shape is that? What shape is that? That's my process for drawing. That's the start of the process. I look at something uh, for what shape it is. Now, let's just take this for instance. This little, this little dog toy here I bought. Now, if I said, you know, or somebody said, oh, draw this dog. I'm not looking at like each piece of hair, which way it goes, or the, how the color stops here and fades out here and all that. I'm looking at the basic shape of it. And I'm going to take each piece of shape and I'm going to break it down. Say like, if I'm looking at the head, I'm saying, okay, the head is like this. The body comes around like this. And this is going to be half. The neck comes down, down like that, like this. That's how I'm going to break it down. Most people will try, they'll say, okay, uh, the head goes like this and the nose comes like this and it comes around and then there's the mouth and then the neck comes down like that and then the ear comes up like, and then they stop and look at it and they say, oh, that's so ugly, I hate that. And that's, that's what most people do. But if you would just see it as a basic shape, what is the closest shape to this thing? This body is more of an oval. Let's see if I can keep this in camera. This body is more of an oval like this. You have this coming down like this. You have something like this. And then you have the neck. It's hard to keep this on camera because my camera is at a re really weird angle. And then you have the head. And then you have the snout like that. Then you kind of break it apart. Just like they're eating that pizza. Piece by piece by piece by piece. And then eventually you will get what you're trying to draw. But as I said, most people, they won't. They'll just, and that's something you have to stop doing. You have to stop beating yourself up. You have to say, okay, all right. So this is my first time drawing a dog. So what I've got to do is just, just keep on sketching, keep on sketching, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Okay, this is not right. Let me, let me, let me make this a little better. Okay, this doesn't look right. Let me take this and let me bring this down here. All right, so this is too long. Let me shorten this up. Let me bring this around. And you just keep going until you get what you're looking for. It's simple. And this is just shape. This is a big oval. This is a big oval. This can be a square right here. This can be a little square right here. This can be another square right there. And it's just oval, oval, cylinder, or square right here. Square right here. Little square right here. Long uh, oval or cylinder, oval or cylinder, a long rectangle or cylinder, and down here, same thing too. So basically, it's just shapes. Look at the shapes of it. Don't don't get all frustrated and like, oh, that's too hard. It's not too hard. Take one bite at a time. Take one another bite, another bite, and you will finish that pizza, and then you will be full, and you will have a beautiful picture, and you'll be on your way. All right. So, the process of drawing, that's, that's one. See what shape it is. Let me put this guy down here so my camera won't work. See what shape you have to start out with. Process two. Now, am I drawing from imagination or am I drawing from real life? Now, that's a big difference. It's a lot easier to draw from real life 
than it would be to draw from imagination. So let's take the easy part first. Let's say this little Garfield thing here. Let's say I'm drawing this Garfield from real life. Okay, this is from real life, of course. I'm looking right at it. So again, I'm going back to step one. I'm looking at it. Okay, what shape is this? This is, to me, an oval. Don't worry about trying to get that oval right. I'm just getting the basic shape in here. And I'm also trying to fit it on my paper because a lot of uh, people that I've run into will start with the head way up here if they're drawing the body. And by the time they get to the feet, it runs off the paper. And I used to do that myself when I was young. But then I started realizing how to do a little better. So if I look at this, this is an oval. This bottom part is an oval as well. I'm just getting the rough sh shapes out here. So a lot of it, the work is done. So on his head, we have these two little mountains, which could be triangles, close to triangles. So if you can't do that, just do a couple of triangles first. Then you have the eyes up here. The eyes are here, and then they're here, and they are just circles. So you notice right away there's a little slit. Keep this up so the camera can see it. And the eye going across here, going across here. You have this big piece here that's kind of like uh, the letter C that's laying down. You have a circle for the nose. And then I'm not even getting into detail yet. I'm just getting the basics out here, the basis out here. So you got the hands, which kind of stop right here. So each hand could be like a little circle, another little circle. This could be a little, um, what do you call that again? Um, a little cylinder. This one could be another cylinder going around here like that. Then I see the little feet. The feet are like half circles because they're flat. The other one, half circle because it's flat. And then his little thighs here. And I keep tilting it up so I can see it because I can't see it. My camera's straight above. So his little thighs right here. So 90% of the work is already done. And I've used just your basic shapes. Now, once I've got that and I'm satisfied with that, I can go ahead and now most people were like, oh, that's perfect. I want to ink it. Now. And it's, it's not perfect yet. It's not there yet. It's just your basic shapes thrown together to make it look as close as this as I can with quick um, shapes and quick sketches. Then I'll go back and I'll look more detail. I say, okay, the ears are not that high and they are round. That's when you take your time. And this is when you're going to use a lot of erasing because you, you see uh, something that is not right. But remember, don't beat yourself up because if this is something that you love, if I wanted to ride that bike, if I really, really in my heart truly wanted to learn how to ride a bike, I would pick that bike up and I'll get on it again and I'll fall off. But I'll pick it up and I'll get on it again and I'll fall off and I'll keep going it until I'm riding down the, the road and my neighbor is cheering for me. So if you want to draw, then this is something you're going to have to do. And what's harder, falling on concrete off of a bike or picking up a pencil and putting the pencil down? I'll go with this every time. I'm not going to hurt myself picking up a pencil and scratch myself up. So I start to see like these little cheekbones here. They, they come out more like this, and that's exaggerating, versus being more round. They come down, and then right here, his shoulder, and I'm not going to draw this whole Garfield. I don't want this to be a Garfield picture. I'll notice his shoulder is right here. See, I have the shoulder down here and the space in between. His shoulder is like right here. And then it goes around to his hands, which I'll notice his hands are touching his face. So the hand is going to be here. And then the other hand is going to be there. So already there's this big mistake, but I'm not kicking myself because I didn't see that the first time. The first time was just a rough sketch. Then I'll take this around and maybe down like that. And then this one goes down, and you can see part of it coming from around his, his, um, around his side here. Then I had the space between here and here, but if you look at this, his little hip here is touching the elbow. So, of course, it's going to be like this. So, I said I'm not going to sit here and draw this whole Garfield, but I'm just showing you this, this, the second step. The second step. If, you, it, it, if you're doing something um, from or should I say live or in person, then that makes it easier than doing it from imagination. Like if you do comic books or you draw, you want to draw scenery somewhere, then, and you don't have it, that's going to be a little harder. So let me put this Garfield out and I might just finish it off camera and um, go into showing you what it's like to do 
or imagination. So, imagining something, something that you don't have in front of you. I want to draw what? Let's just say I want to draw a face. I want to draw a face, not just a face, I want to draw an old man. Okay, now, when you start thinking, is it is he going to be black? Is he going to be white? Is he going to be Indian? Is he going to be Mexican? So you have to take all that stuff into account when you start to get really serious. But let's just say I just want to draw a standard face of an old guy. Okay, so as artists or potential artists, when we see things, we need to start paying more attention to things. If I, for instance, take this, and these are just some of the props that I have, and I, I'll show you this. I say, oh, this is the little BMW toy that I bought because I was doing a comic book and it required a BMW drawing. You know, you would look at it like, oh, okay, that's a nice toy, and I put it up, and I would say, okay, draw that BMW. You'd be like, what? What? I didn't look at it like that. So you have to start looking at things and remembering them. I think that's the best way I, I, I can think of it. It's like, you know, that, oh, it's okay. It's got a little car, ante a little antenna on here, and the mirrors go here. They don't go all the way back to the door, and this type of spokes on the, on the car, or rims on the car. You have to start looking at that stuff because as an artist, you may want to draw that one day. Yes, you can go on Google and find certain pictures. But when you start doing stuff from imagination, let's say you wanted to draw a BMW and you go on Google and all your BMWs are like this or like this or from the back like that. But you need an angle like from the top, maybe something, some weird kind of angle like, like something like, like this. You have to be able to see that in your head to do it. And we'll get into that later, but let's just say I want to draw the face. Now, we've seen millions of faces and probably drawn a few faces. So, first of all, you know that the face is an oval. You have to understand what it is you're drawing. You can't, it's not right in your face. It's not drawing, you're not drawing it live. You're not drawing a person. You have to understand what it's like. And I'm going to do this really quick. So, then to say split the face, by understanding it, you have to break it down. I say I'll split the face here. And then I'll put the eyes because... The, the, width, the width of the nose determines the eye, the width of the eye. The center of the eye is going to be the center, the edge of the mouth. So that's your, your, your basic proper proportions. So basically it's, it's understanding what you're drawing. You have to see it in your head and you have to understand what you're drawing still using your shapes. Now I'm just going to do this real quick because there are other things that I want to show you about that doing. Let's just sharpen this pencil or get another pencil. Alright, and then here's your mouth. And let's work with the eyes a little bit. And then give them some eyebrows. Okay, and get a little, little cheekbones, the chin. And more of a head. Throw some ears. So you know the bottom of the nose, kind of like the top of the eye, is where the ear goes. So you now have a face. I don't know why. It looks a little bit like Will Smith to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, so now you have the face. But you want to draw the face of an old man. So how does old people look? What, 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 what distinguishes that person from somebody that's 20 years old. Things like that you have to see and you have to remember. All right, let's get rid of some of these lines first. And I know there are probably still some people out there that's like, why is he using a red pencil? Because the red pencil, if I need to go back in, or if, if I'm satisfied with my lines, on the red pencil or if I have a lot of extra scratchy lines like you see all these lines up here I can go back with a regular pencil and say this is the line that I want and I'll draw that one line and I don't have to worry about all those scratchy lines that's another process of my drawing like that so now I have one solid line where which 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 the head is going to stay so if I come back and ink this thing instead of me 
saying which, which line was I going to use? Which line was I going to use? I know which line I was going to use because that's the pencil line. That's one reason for using my red pencil. I have a red pencil, a regular pencil, and a blue lead pencil. So if I draw this Garfield and then I put some clothes on him and then I put something else on top of that and something else on top of that. So now I can use like one color is the body. So then I can use the second color as the clothes and I can use the third color as something else. That way I'll know or I won't, my lines won't get mixed up and I'll know what's what and what I'm going to keep. So that's one, another reason for using the red pencil. And then I like the way it grips. Like if you use an ink pen, certain ink pens, they have a nice smooth line. Other ink pens, as soon as you put it down, you get that, that little blob of, of ink and you do a line and you can touch it and then it smears because it goes on wet. And some ink pens will barely make a good mark across there because it's, the ink is not flowing out right. So just imagine this as a good ink pen that flows out well. So yeah, I like the way it grips the, the, um, the paper. It erases fairly well. And as I say, it, it will, it will, I can use other colors over top of it instead of like I'm using a pencil. I'll have so many different pencil lines and it erases fairly well. It erases better than the blue line pencil. And if I'm not mistaken, when you photocopy it, you won't get all those extra lines, especially if you photocopy it on black and white. If you photocopy it on color, you're going to get all of that. All right. So back to the process of drawing. So you have to start seeing stuff and memorizing it. So doing an older person, you know, as you get old, your skin wrinkles. Now, how old do I want this person to be? I want him to just have like hair on the side. He's like going bald on the top. So in my thinking process, this is what I'm thinking and this is what I'm seeing. So let's say like you're getting a little hair here. Because if you're drawing comics or you're doing something, or if you're doing uh, character sketches or drawing backgrounds or any kind of uh, job or process where it's going to take a lot of thinking and drawing, you're going to have to be able to see it in your head. So, okay, we all know we have these like these lines. I, know, I forgot what these lines are called. Here you have like around the mouth. You have your crow's feet, as they call it, around the eyes. And this is all the process. You have your eyes are kind of like weak as you get older. Your eyes kind of like slope down. And this is just from seeing and observing and a lot of times just drawing a lot. The more you do something, the more I ride that bike, the better I'll become at it. You have your, your brow wrinkles. You have your, your face gets a little thin. Give him that chin. The head could be start to wrinkle up. You get the bags under the eyes. Or the lines. I'm going to say bags, but the way that the skull is... Um, made and i would draw a skull right quick a skull a skull and i have an example i'm trying to look at it where uh just this okay just, we're just doing the, the top part and your eyes are like this so right around here it kind of like sucks in it's kind of yeah it just the the, the bone kind of like takes a dip in and of course this is this is empty so when you get old, your skin starts to kind of like tighten up, dry up, and then you you have those those empty skull lines. You you you're starting to get that. You see that those little the, I don't want to call it an indentation. I don't want to call it that hole, but yeah, this is what that comes from. It's just you know, and then you you get more eyes, more eyes, more wrinkles under the eyes. So basically. In your imagination, you have to see what you're doing when you are imagining or when you're trying to draw something that is not um, in front of you. Your little cracks in your lips. 
basically as you get older, and I don't want to say you dry up, but that's kind of, you know, that's, that's kind of what happens. Your skin gets dry. Uh, it just doesn't have that moisture that it, that it had. And then, yeah, yeah, sorry, old people. And then your eyes are kind of like sunk into your head. Getting old is no fun. Unless you take care of yourself. Take care of yourself now, people. Take care of yourself now. Eat right. Stop drinking all that soda and eating all that, that junk food. It's not fun. It's not fun. Pains, aches, all of those things. Speed drawing. So there you go. This is your, your, your elderly kind of person here. And I don't have anybody old sitting in front of me. It's just from imagination and just what you have to start doing. If you ever hope to become a, a, a really good artist is start to look at stuff and memorize it. I remember I was heard somebody said something about, um, and that's what got me to start thinking about it. It's like when you, you see like cars, wrecked cars on the road or junk cars or cars that's been, you know, smashed in an accident. And we drive by and we go by and we look at it, but we really don't look at it. But when you start looking at how the glass looks when it's cracked or how a broken window looks when it's when it's broken, then you you, you start to, to memorize that stuff and it makes for a better drawing on artists or looking for um reference all the time because you kind of know what it what it looks like so like if uh, a window if i said draw a broken window like most people would do something like that in a window but windows don't break like that window shatters and it's the glass is it breaks in in pieces like this or to a degree like this anyway But when you, until you start looking at this stuff, you, you really don't see or you really don't know in your head what it's like. And that's part of the process is just I have to reach back in my head and understand what something looks like because I've looked at enough of it. Even if you just go online and just look at stuff. Uh, it's like I say, what would a nuclear powered submarine look like? Now, how many of us have been on a nuclear powered submarine looks like? I mean, that stuff you can go online, but you can't remember it. But simple things like this, the broken glass, you should be able to remember. Or just cracked glass. How does cracked glass look like? We've seen spider webs a lot, but how does a spider web form? So you have to kind of understand these things when you draw. And then you just, you have it in your head that you can draw it. Okay, so my third process would be seeing the whole picture. If I'm just drawing a Garfield or broken glass or an old man, and that's just one thing, that's pretty simple. But if I want to draw people behind this guy or a whole scene or he's in his bedroom or, or whatever, then you have to see that as well. Not only have to see that, you have to angle that. Let's just, for instance, here's this ruler okay so you say draw a ruler okay I draw a ruler but you want to draw a ruler from a different angle you have to see that in your head how does that ruler look from that different angle or which way am I going to twist it in that different angle how much of the top do I want to show how much of you know, do I want to see the bottom do I want to see the front uh, what is the, the ruler made of is it is it cheap wood is it plastic is it going to be a square ruler is it going to have you know big numbers is it going to be metrics all these things you have to think about when you are creating from your head, from nothing. So if I say I want to put two people 
behind him, one person back here, and then one person back here. So what is my thought process on doing that, or how did I do that? Well, I say, okay, this person wants to be closer. I want this person closer, and this person is going to be further back. Now, you, there, is, there are ways to make it look like these per people are like in the same room or standing on the same floor. You can either do, like, let's, well, this one would be a chin, the chin, and that's kind of like automatic for me. You can, if all their chins are on the same line, like that, then they look like they're in the same room. So if I say I wanted somebody that's like way, way in the back, as long as his chin is on that line, he will be in that same room with these guys. Let's just say this is, this is the, 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 the bottom of my panel. So for this guy, you have to draw the shoulders and the arms coming down. This guy, you just have to just draw a little bit of that. And this guy, you probably just see the neck. So these are ways or processes that I think about before I start drawing or when I'm start, when I draw or basically even before that, I've got to understand. I have to see the picture in my head. I'm trying to form words for you guys to understand. I have to see that whole picture before I start drawing. I have to see that picture in my head. And then as I put that picture down with rough lines, then I can say to myself, do I like that or is it wrong? And then I have to change it. That's why I say, don't start inking something as soon as you think it looks good. Because this Garfield, it needed a lot. If I'm drawing from live, I needed a lot. But if I'm drawing like an airplane flying in the sky, I say, okay, here's my airplane. Like that. And here's the tail. And it's got engines here. And it's this. And here's the windows. And the thing. And I say to myself, okay, I didn't want it that much of an angle. I have to change that angle a little bit. So I'll bring it more like this way. Here's the front windows of the pilot. Here's the nose. Here's the windows. Here's the wing. Here's the engines. There's the little tail back here. And then I say, okay, well, I didn't want it down. I wanted it more up more. So then I have to change it again. So by doing the rough sketch, even if you take another piece of paper and you do rough sketches on here till you get it right, then you take your regular paper and then you draw it on there or you can light table it. And a light table is just a table. Imagine this, this brown here, you can see my hands. This brown here was plastic and there was a light underneath of it. So you put your original drawing on that and you put this on here and you can basically see through it the same way you can see through this. Let me give you this good, bad example. Here's a light. You can't see that. I just turned on my side light. So I take that light and I will put my this paper on the light and you can actually see through it. It's basically like tracing paper. So because I have two pieces of paper, put the paper on top of this. It's bad. Let me put the light down. Two pieces of paper, put the paper on this. You really can't see it. But if this was a light table, it's basically this lamp with glass over top of it, but it's a tinted glass and you put your drawing over top of that and you can see perfectly through it. I can't turn the light up anymore or twist it up anymore. And you can perfectly see through it and you can just basically trace it. That's a light table. That's when you have something with so much detail and it looks good. Like this is my rough drawing and it looks good and I do some other stuff, other stuff. And I'm like, this is perfect. I want this to be the same way. I put it on my light table, I'll trace it and then I'm good. It's the right size. If you, you know, have to put it on your copy machine and copy it and, uh, and enlarge it a little bit, do that. But that's, that's when you get into the serious comics. I don't use light tables because I kind of, I'm happy with my original drawing. So some people do, some people do a lot of sketches and really light table it, but I don't. But back to the process, you have to see the whole picture. Uh, you have to get the right angle that you want, and then you start drawing it. As I say, if you don't like it, erase it, change a few elements. Like if this was a a, a, a a woman, I wanted a woman here. This could be like his granddaughter or something. And then I say, I get out this all done. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, the granddaughter should be here because this is going to be his grandson. And since he was born first, it's kind of like a, a age thing goes in you know line. So I have to change that. You know, it's just, it's it's so much to the process of drawing and basically it's seeing it in your head first 
rough sketching it, and then completely drawing it out. All right, now let's say I'm drawing a scene. I'm not drawing a one piece or a close up of anything. I'm drawing a scene. And so let's just say that scene is going to be my camera not focusing. Let's just say that scene is going to be somebody in a park running, one person running in a park. Okay, now I've been to the park a number of times. I'm sure you have too, but I have to get that image in my head. I have to say, okay, what kind of park? Or should I say, it's, just, it's a park. Okay, she's running in a park. But I guess you'd have to say that. What kind of park? Um, what is the angle that I want to see this on at, should I say? Angle meaning, okay, let's say if I put this guy on top of this thing here. This, let's just say this is, this is a, a plank. This guy's walking on a plank. Or maybe I should just do that because I've got this guy. This guy's walking on a plank. Okay, now I'll just say like, this is a, a wooden plank and down below there's like water like 300 feet below with jagged rocks. So I'm going to draw that. How am I going to draw that? Am I going to draw the straight down? And this is the hero now and I've got to see the hero's face. So am I going to draw it straight down? Am I going to angle it? Am I going to see it from the front? And it's hard to, for me to get this camera. Now I could draw it like this with him put his feet on the thing, but if the water is down below, then you're not going to see that, but you need to see the water and the jagged rocks. So I would have to find the perfect angle to draw this and see the water and the jagged rocks and the character. So just because I have this, let me do this. And usually I'll get it in my head the first time. Uh, I, it's, just, it's just me that, and I draw it and I like the angle. So you know I mean, rarely have I had to draw something like five or six times because in my mind, I've already, I've already seen this character. I've twisted him. I've taken him up. I've taken him down. And I, I know what the background looks like. So that's something you're going to have to do. So that's something you're going to have to learn. So for me, I would do probably something like this. This is the plank that he's walking on. You're going to have the water running down. So let's say, if, depending on the the plank, if this is the edge <clears throat> where he, he um, steps on that, I would have like the maybe some rocks or something going down to the river and then the edge of the river here. And then you can have like the jagged rocks here in the water, sharp rocks here. And let's say my border ends right here because we don't know how long he's got to walk. Then I will have him walking. and. When I do a rough sketch, I don't do, and if you've seen any of my videos, hopefully that didn't, wasn't blurred too long. When you've seen any of my videos, I'll show you how to draw using the, the, um, the beetle technique and then the, the tuna can. And then this, and I'll show you how to do it piece by piece. But when I'm doing a rough like this, I will tend to do more of the, um, what am I on? I will do a, Rectangle. I don't know when it comes to me in these shapes. I'll do the rectangle first to to make sure I get it right. So this 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 is gonna be back here. It's gonna be there, like that. Then I will go and I will put in the rib cage, the direction line, the tuna can, the the house following that direction line, the legs. The other leg, the foot, and notice how these are, they're all rough, but they're right because I've got the basic body shape in there. So basically I'm just throwing in the detail part like that. Now see. I can have the person's face, he could be looking more this way, he could be looking more of a down, or he could be looking at the camera. So you see the person's face, you see he's worried. And you see what he's worried about because you got the, the jagged rocks underneath the water. You've got, let's just say this could be more of the mountain going here, the little cliff that's going straight up and then you know what rocks look like, the cliff looks like. And you can have like some sharks in the water too, just to, you know, just, just for the heck of it. 
jagged rocks and sharks always make you know a bad combination in the water so something like that i have that in my head and it's because i've, I've drawn you know enough to to know what something kind of looks like but if i really really need to really detail it then i will look up reference reference is your best friend like you have that and say okay so each panel each wood this wood is not flat like that you say okay wood is like this each, each piece is going to be like that they might not be if it's an old bridge there might be some spaces in between the wood that you can see down um maybe it's an old raggedy uh bridge maybe here you have this one missing but then you have still have the strength, so you have to figure out how these are going to connect. You know, is it going to be like a, um, a rope here and it's connected somehow? Maybe there's something on the bottom that connects the rope and these could be screwed to the rope. Uh, is it an old rickety bridge that's like falling apart? And there's holes all in the wood. There could be, like I said, big gaps, big spaces between with the wood tore up. So that's when you start to get into more detail and that's when you're going to have to know, okay, what does wood look like? What would a plank look like? You know, how do I detail it? You know, it's a two by four or, or two or, or was it four by six or six by whatever, depending on how thick you want to make it. As I said, you want to have a missing space here. So you'd see the water here and another shark fin to show that, you know, it's missing. But once you do your inking and so forth, you'll know that, that there's a missing piece right there. You know, and one could be just like hanging down, it could be here, and it's just hanging down, it's all broke. And this one could be right here. So, with your side. So, as I'm saying, you have to see it in your head, you, the, the, the whole picture. Then you twist it. How do I want it to look? Do I want, you know, I could have done a forward one of him forward like this coming forward straighten that leg out a little bit more and here's the bridge here like that going back and then you can see whatever some of the cliff and then you see some of the water underneath here but that wouldn't be as exciting as that so if I put the foot here Now, if somebody was here, now this is this is this is where the imagination comes in. If suddenly he's walking, and then you see somebody right here, this would be in black. He just suddenly showed up. This could be like the next panel, and then let's just say here's his hand, and then he's got a dagger or whatever in his hand. But of course, it's got to fit with this. Then he's like, oh, my God, this is, you know, it's, it's the guy. He's, he, how did he get to the other side of the bridge? He's going to try to kill me. Yeah, so this is, as I'm saying, you, you see the whole thing in your head. All right, let's move on. Let's just say I'm going to do an interior of something. Interior, you can do an exterior as well, but... Let's just go with interior. So I want to draw the floor. There's a there's a room and there is a round table in the middle of the room. So here's my room, here's my floor right here. And here's my round table right there in the middle of the floor. Now with doing this, I'm looking straight down on it. That's not exciting, that doesn't tell me anything. So you have to figure out your angle of your floor. That's one of the, 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 the first things you have to do when drawing a scene. What angle is your ground going to be at? So let's just say, okay, well, let me angle this back a little bit more like this. And this is just using your shapes again. And you just, you got to understand, you have to know how to manipulate your shapes. If you can't count money, you can't spend money, or you're going to get ripped off every time. And knowing the, your, your shapes is the same as money. If I give you $100, and you go buy something for $5 and somebody gives you 50 cent 
change and you don't know how to count it, you just got ripped off. If you're drawing something and your perspective is off and your your body's off and all that, it's not your drawing is not going to look good. So we take this floor and we lean it back a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit. So here's my table here. Well, let's just make this just uh, just it's a, it's a it's a cylinder table like that. And you say, okay, that's not good enough. So let's lean this floor back just a little bit more. So you have to, in your head, you have to see that angle that, that you want before you can place anything in that room or on that ground. And if you say, okay, well, let me just lean this back all the way. Let's just right there. So the floor is now flat. You're now flat. Your camera is like laying down here on the floor. This is your camera pointing, looking this way. It's laying down on the floor and this is that cylinder, cylinder table. So just imagine a tree trunk cut and then they sanded the sides of it and it's nice and perfectly round. This is one big solid thing. So you have to say in your head, seeing in your head, which way would be better to show this room? Definitely not like this. You could use any of these three, but that depends on number one, um, what else is going to go in this room? Um, that's basically what else is going to go in this room. How big is the room? So if you're going to put other elements in the room and there's something behind the table that you not, might need to show, then you won't see that. Let's just say this is a piece of wood and this is, I don't know, something. Just, just a little teddy bear. There's a little teddy bear sitting on the floor right there. It will work here depending on how close it is to the table. If it's like right close at the table, let's just say a little girl put a teddy bear there and it's like a plate on there and she's playing, you know, house or dinner with the teddy bear. So the closer or the more angle that you turn that floor up, the less of that teddy bear you're going to see to where, especially if it's not a tall teddy bear, if this thing was like four feet high or not four feet, that's too big for a table. Let's say three feet high this, and the teddy bear was only like a foot high. So the closer you get to this and here you wouldn't even see the teddy bear and here you definitely wouldn't see it. So if this is something that you needed to see extra in the room, this would not be good. That may, but I mean, if, if you're focusing on a teddy bear, so maybe this one would probably be your best, but you slide the bear back just a little bit. And that's like, kind of like an artist, uh, artist get over. You can do that as an artist. You can, you know, unless you have a script or something that says the teddy bear is like touching the table. His legs are like, you know, around the table. So, but other than that, something like that. So you have to figure out your, your angle of your room. So let's just go, let's go with something between this and this. So do this kind of big. So let's just do this. And this is basically just a triangle. If I do a triangle like this, it's simple. And then you chop it off right there. That's what you have. People don't see that stuff. They just, you know, they, they want to go about it the hard way to learn how to draw something nobody teaches you the, the easy way if you know the triangle could be you know way up here chop it off here chop it off here chop it off back here if i kept that you know i could have like um or what i was gonna say a road but no, no we're not gonna we're not gonna go there but that's basically how you draw a road if you're drawing a road like that and if you wanted to come to a point then you can put your your, your um land back here or your, yeah, your land back here and then your buildings here. Uh, you can actually put some things here, but you would have to do this type of a, a deal to put things so it would be in perspective. Buildings like that may go all the way to this, but that's perspective. That's, that's kind of like a whole nother story. So we're just, we're doing this, we're doing perspective, but we're just making it quick and easy for you. So we're putting stuff in here. So you would have to know how to put stuff in here that's gonna fit this floor. If I put a box in here, and it's hard for me to draw without doing it. If I put a box in here, okay, let's just do this. This is a wall. This is the wall. This is the back wall of that room. And it's just a what? It's a rectangle on top of a, triangle 
that would go all the way back if I didn't cut it off. So wherever this triangle meets, that's going to be your vanishing point or your eye level for that room. It's very simple. So if this is the other walls, and this is just basically would be an X coming from that point. So for those that didn't really understand, let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. Point X, X, join X. You have your room, you have your ceiling, you have your floor, and if you want to cut it off, you can cut it off like that. Erase this. This is going to be your eye line. This is going to be where your camera is. Your camera is pointed right here. So anything below this, you're going to see the top of it. Anything above this, you're going to see the bottom of it. So you got that. Uh, I'll continue with that. This is your floor. This is your wall. So if this is your line. So this is your doorway. Let's say put a doorway. And this doorway comes above this line, higher above this. You're going to see under the bottom of that doorway. So this has got to be coming from this line. You're going to see underneath the bottom of that doorway, which means you're going to see that extra doorway sill or meat or whatever you call that. If it's below this, you're not going to see it. It's going to go this line. You're going to see the top of it. So if I put a cabinet here, this is like a, I'd have to bring that out. Let's just say, let's just do this. If I put a cabinet right here, which has got to go up in front of that line, you're going to see the top of that cabinet because it is below that line. This doorway, you're going to see the top of the seal. I believe that's the door seal. Like, yeah, because it's above that camera. Something else you're going to have to remember. So whatever you see put in this room, it's got to fit the, the view of the camera to be right. And it's got to sit on that floor right. So if I put a glass of, if I put that table on this floor and I drew this table, this round table like this, that's not it. You have to be able to see the opening like this cylinder right here. If I put this, this is directly, this is directly above the camera. So you're seeing basically just that. Now, if I tilt this down, you're going to start seeing the roundness of it, and you're going to see more of that. So it has to fit the floor. So if I put it on this thing, this was the floor, like this, and it's above. Once I tilt this whole floor, this whole thing has to tilt this circle, this oval circle, which turns into an oval, has to fit exactly with how that floor is tilted something else you have to kind of get used to but by riding that bike more and more you get better so that oval will have to be more like this to sit on that floor right so this amount of curvature thank you would have to equal that same amount of curvature on the floor and then that pretty much sits right so anything i put on here like a box or whatever has to be the same angle as this floor. And this is rough, so if, if it's off a little bit, then forgive me. Or if I put a rug down, put a rug down, it has to, has to fit as well. That rug is just wrong, Brian. It's not going to go, it does have to go like that. I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. That rug is just wrong. Perspective is really easy, but when you mess up, you mess up big time. Now, let's just say I wanted a chair or something. It's a chair, but I don't want it to be perfectly going the same way as every other piece of furniture. Because sometimes when you throw a chair out, it's different. As long as that you have that line, this is your, your, your eye line, if you draw coming off, let's just say, I don't want the chair, yeah, I want the chair like this. That's when you get in your two point. As long as you stay on that eye line, then you'll be all right. You have this here, that here, and maybe the backing can be right here, or the backing could be here, make it a little easier for you. Like that. As long as one line goes to this point here 
and then the other line goes to that point there. Let's we'll see, this is going to go up at an angle. So this one and this one and this one and this one and that one. And then you have your chair, same thing. You can tilt this up a little bit more. Bring this back a little up, up a little bit more. Legs, same line, same line going here, going here. And then you won't have everything in the same uniform line. I was gonna say configuration. This is turning into a drawing lesson and not more of the process of my drawing. This is all part of the process of the way I draw, but it's the process of drawing as well. Angling that line, your ground. Thank you for not blurring because I didn't look at my monitor for a minute. That's the same way with doing people. If you know how to draw people, you know their shapes. Then you have to be able to manipulate their shapes to turn them up and down and left and right and so forth. So this is a, this is a um, oval, this is an oval. This can be a square, these are ovals. So the same way I showed you how to do this is the same way you would have to manipulate arms and legs. So if I put a person in this room here, depending on how tall the person is gonna be, you have to be able to manipulate, and this person is very far away, so it won't take too much to actually draw this person in this room, other than his feet. Your feet have to go in the angle of the um, floor. It has to fit that floor. The rest you can kind of like get away with because he's so small, but when you draw a close-up of a person, you're gonna have to be able to get him on that same level. So if I did his feet just straight across like this, it wouldn't look right. So you have to bring that the same way you brought everything, the, the same way you would put this, have this oval, it would have to be, his foot would have to be like that same way or that same openness so that he would fit in that room. Because his feet are on the floor, big feet though. So we'll wrap this up. If I did a person, you have to be able to manipulate those shapes of that person to make him fit on that floor or in any environment. So, and the hard part is the arms and the legs. So if you're above this person, it's like the teddy bear getting closer to the table if you're above this person, the shoulders are going to go back behind the head. That way you'll know that you're kind of above that person because of the shoulders. If you're right there with the person, face to face, the shoulders are going to be, you're going to see the neck and the collarbone is going to be flat. That's how you usually judge by the collarbone. If you're way above that person, this is going to take on a whole new shape and the head is gonna be right into it like that. And you're gonna be looking down at them. If you're gonna be above the person, it's gonna take another shape. And this is something I should have drew on one of my other videos. It's gonna be you know, above the person. looking down, he's going to be looking down at you. So if I brought that head, tilt the head over, so he's looking down at you. Kind of like that. And why do you always draw muscular people? I don't know. That's just the habit of mine. Drawing comics for so long. 
and finishing it all, finishing it, finishing it off, the one thing you have to do is use the, as I say, the cylinder thing. If you have a cylinder, this, and I drew lines on this to actually show you. If you have this cylinder and it's on the ground, you see these stripes. These stripes are going to be straight across. Now, if you start to tilt it up, you see it in the light, these stripes are going to start going around it. So that's the same thing for the person right here. As this collarbone is straight, if this person is straight on you, this collarbone is, the, is like the giveaway thing. It's going to be like that, straight across. Now, if you start to lift the camera up to see above the person, this collarbone is going to start doing this. When you all the way up, you're going to see the head in the center, and of course the collarbone is going to go all the way around just like that. Now, when you start to go down, you're going to, this is going to turn those circles up. It's going to go on an up angle the same way this is, like that. And you draw, and since the arm is a cylinder, and the legs are cylinders, you're going to have that angle of roundness going that way. Now, if I did this guy here and he's going down, his legs, since his legs are cylinders, it'd be like that. And since his arm is a cylinder, it'll be like that too, going down. These circles tell the whole thing. So what you can do is do something like this. Like just keep it on the, on the line. Throw that down. This, this, making it shorter, 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 shorter. And start to just round it off so you can either you do one one way and the other the other way so you can do two of these and you can do like this like this like this like that and then as you go shorter you start to round it off say so like if this is going to fall this way if this pencil was here it's going to fall this way and then when you do these it's going to go it's going to fall this way so start to round this off and remember the same roundness as this you have to have on this you'll see the bottom so as it goes down more, you'll round it off more, round it off more, round it off even more, and round it off more. Same thing with this, round it off, round it off, round it off, round it off, and then this part too. And you basically, you have your thing falling. You, you know what it's like when it tilts over. And that's the same thing you can do with your arms and your legs. So if this was a leg, Let's just say I put a foot right here, put a foot right here, and he's sitting down. The other part of this is going to be right here. This is going to be your front, and this is going to be your back. So that would be that leg. So this is going to be your, your, um, your, your hips, Brian, say it. So this is going to be your back circle. This is going to be your front circle, and that's an easy way to draw cylinders. Find out your back circle and your front circle. So this one's going to be... He, uh, up on here, and this one's going to be down here, and then you have your foot, and it's the same thing for arms, the same thing, it's very simple once you realize how to do it, not too many people are showing you this way, because a lot of people are just showing you how well they can draw, they start out, you know, with good motives, oh, you start this way, you start this way, but then they'll start doing, you know, all the hatching, and then you know, the muscles with the shading in it and all of this extra stuff and all of that. And at the end of it, you're like, my God, he can really draw. And you realize, my God, I'll never be that good because he's not showing you why he put this muscle here and why he shaded it and why he did some uh, feathering on it. He's just showing you how good he is or she is. And that's one reason that got me drawing. I'm not trying to make really pretty pictures. I can do that, but I want to show you how you can draw and make pretty pictures. So once you understand this, then you can be able to do it yourself. And it, it kind of frustrates me to, to see all these people with this great talent too. And they say, oh, show you how to draw Spider-Man. It's like, no, it's more should be like, watch me draw Spider-Man and you will be amazed. So I, I don't, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to show you how you can draw Spider-Man and you be amazed that you can draw Spider-Man. So once you get these cylinders like that, and that's the same with the square, you, you, you 
you have to do the same thing with the square. You have to manipulate your shapes. Learn to manipulate them. And once you master that, then you are you are a master drawer. <laughs> so yeah, you just have to do that. And that's the same when you put this box in a room, this floor is going to be just like this. This floor is going to go just like that. So the box, anything that sits flat has to, to sit the same angle as that floor. So this floor would be just like this, like with the round table, wherever I did with that. This one's going to go back at an angle a little bit. This one's going to go back more, and this one's going to be more up. So, yeah, that is the process to drawing, and that is my process of drawing. There's probably a lot more stuff that I can cover that I miss, but I know this video is probably over an hour long. So hopefully you guys got some good information, and then you understand a little bit about drawing a little bit more. And as I say, it's, it's, it's a lifetime thing, and I'm still trying to improve. There are a lot of things that I can improve on, I should improve on, and I need to improve on. But the more you do it, the better you will become. Just don't pick up that bike and then slam it down on the ground and, you know, curse it because you fell off the first time. Just because you can't get it right the first time, don't, have, don't fear it. You know, don't worry about it. Just keep moving forward, and you'll get there. So that's going to be it for this, and I thank you. I forgot your name. It's right here anyway for giving me that insight and in you know to do this video. So, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Stay safe, keep drawing.